I have been watching your show. I've been so impressed. And Thank you. you're such a driving force behind it, producing it and show running and starring in it. And I know you were working before that as an actress. So mm. what made you decide to create your own show? Um, so, yeah, I had been working as an actress probably f off and on for 10 years or trying to work and was really struggling to make it happen and make it work. And I had a toddler son. And so, I mean, I was moving every three months with him and had a million odd jobs. And so I wrote a script to try to get staffed on a show as a writer. And so that's sort of where it started. And as soon as I started meeting on shows as a staff writer, I booked a series, so as an actor. So I didn't need to then go staff anymore, right. but I had the script and I decided I would try to go develop it and sell it somewhere. But I didn't fully trust that people would understand what was in my head just by reading it. So I went and shot a short film, like a scene from the script. Mm -hmm. And that short ended up going to Sundance and winning an award and helping me sort of establish myself as a filmmaker and then in turn go back and sell it as a show. So, wow. so it all it sort of- easy in a way. I mean, it was so super easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just that you made the short and then had a TV show is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's really, um, been a wild sort of dream come true, you know? Like if, if, it was, if I was going to say like, what's the best outcome from going and making this nine minute little movie, this would probably be it, you know? Yeah, so. and did you have a background in writing or how did you decide, oh, I'm going to try to staff on a show? How did you get from actress to writer? Yeah, I feel like you know, I went to school and studied English literature and started writing scripts at Barnard when, mm -hmm. I, when I was in college, but really didn't see anyone modeling what I wanted to do as a filmmaker. Um, and so I thought my, my, really it seemed like the only avenue open to me was as an actress. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I can do that and try to, f it sort of became this like self-competitive thing. Like, can I get an agent? Can I start getting guest stars? That kind of thing, but always, in the back of my mind or in my heart, it was, I wanted to be directing and writing. And in a way, the 10 years of indie films and guest stars and that kind of thing was my film school. Um, so I feel like I I'd always was headed there. Yeah. It just took maybe a little bit longer uh, than if I had just known in the beginning to go to film school or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. And was it like, a burning story for you? Like, do you feel like Smilf is sort of your story that you need to tell? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, was yeah. there, would there I mean, be no way for you to have set it down? Was it inevitable that you were gonna tell this story? There, there are issues and um, circumstance that I feel like appear in everything I write. It's almost like Writers, uh, there's that thing like writers have one story to tell and yeah. they find different ways how to tell it. Um, so there are things like that that uh, appear in Smilf that also appear in, in my other projects. But there was that summer that I made this short film, I ended up making three shorts. And I was like, oh, these were all projects that I could pursue. Mm. And Smilf was sort of the first one to take off. Um, but yeah, there are things in Smilf that are very near and dear to my heart and tr somewhat true to my life. Um, and so that sort of was the inspiration. You know, when Isaac, my son, when he was small, we moved every three months and I kept running into these really funny living situations. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of like the beginning of Smilf. You know? Moved just because you couldn't afford where you were living. Yeah, like we got evicted and then we stayed with a friend and then we found a place on Craigslist and then we house sat and it was sort of like this thing where it was almost like these hijinks situations. And then I got my first acting gig and so we moved to Canada for three months and it was sort of like this um, sort of snowball effect of trying to survive and needing to move for various you know, reasons. Yeah, I related to the scene where you brought your son to the audition and he was sitting in there. Cause I remember <laughs> there was one time where I had an audition and I was just like, I, I don't have childcare today and I really wanna go. 
So I'm just going to bring her. And she was tiny, my middle child. And I was just like, you know, she was sleeping in the thing. And you brought the little... Yeah, I just brought it in and did it. And I, you know, I kind of felt weird about it, but I was like, why do I feel weird? She's sleeping and who cares? And did and, anyone comment? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it for a second and, you know, but it is this thing where when you're a mom and you're a working mom, yeah. you, you do know, what you, have to you do, do what you do. Mm. I don't know, do you have like a, something like prostitution adjacent? You get to call the shots, be your own woman and all that good stuff. There's a risk factor. But some people find that thrilling. And with your history of sexual abuse and food issues, I mean, you really do make the perfect candidate. So with Roseanne, um, how did you get the revival going again? How did that get set up? Yeah. I had thought about it for many years, and it was almost like when something's supposed to happen, it just starts bubbling up inside of you. So I was thinking about it. I didn't think all the cast would do it. And I was thinking, well, what if some people did it? Or what if we did a spinoff? Or what if, and it was just sort of in my mind. And then John Goodman came on my talk show. Mm -hmm. And we did a little sketch of the show, like um, a spoof. Oh, yeah. And it was so fun and so easy. We did one take. And then we, we did the interview. And we asked if he would ever consider doing a reunion and he he said in a heartbeat Mm -hmm. and it was just kind of an emotional day for me doing that sketch and then I thought well if John will do it maybe we actually can do it and I started to think about what what it would be now if we did it and even how many episodes I just started thinking about all the details of it and where the characters would be to some extent, just some basic framework. And then I called Roseanne and talked to her about it. And she said, you know, after some talking, she said she would she would do it, but she didn't think the studio would do it. Mm -hmm. And then I called Tom Warner, who was half of Carsey Warner, and he said he would do it, but he didn't think Marcy Carsey would do it. Mm -hmm. And then I called Marcy and just sort of no one thought anybody else would do it. Yeah. And then that's sort of how it was born. And then we sold it within a couple of weeks. It just snowballed. It was it was like kindling waiting to be ignited, basically. And so what was the impetus? Like when, when you did that sketch that day with John, were, was it sort of, oh, there's more to the story that needs to be told? Or this was such a special part of your, you know, um, part of you when you were growing up, and so let's revisit it. And like, what was it that made you want to do it? I think it was a few things, but um, I, for some reason, I could never set the show down in my mind. Mm-hmm. It was like we had done it, and then everything else became a comparison. Like that was the barometer for everything else, yeah. and I didn't feel finished with it. Yeah. So it just kind of haunted me. And I think it's funny because if we finish now, I'm looking forward to us doing another season. But if we finished before we did that, I think I still would have felt okay. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can let go now, you know? So so there was just some part of me that wasn't done. And, um, and then I also, I think the whole cast just wanted to be together and spend time with each other. And then, the climate in our country, it was just everything aligned where it seemed like the perfect time. Right. I mean, this show is and was so important, you know, to so many people. And I can say Smilf is directly inspired by growing up watching Roseanne. Oh, wow. And seeing people who felt like my family on television. I was like, oh, those... Uh, those people speak to each other, like how my family speaks to yeah. each other, you know, with sarcasm. And I felt watching Smilf, I was thinking this is so amazing that this character is struggling, doesn't have money, it's difficult to buy things. Even when people are portrayed as working class on TV, you don't usually see the real struggle. Yeah. 
And I wonder why that is. Is it the writers don't actually have the experience of the struggle or? Or they don't want to put something so real on. Yeah. I mean, it's changing with cable and shameless, things like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's definitely been, it gets watered down somehow in the process. I'm going to ask you something and you got to be honest with me. Don't worry, you're not going to get in trouble. That's what you said last time. <laughs> yeah, but this time I mean it. That's what you said last time. <laughs> okay, we've established you remember things. What is different in filming, you know, this new season of Roseanne um, versus, the, you know, the one from how many years ago was it? We started 30 years ago and went off the air 21 years ago, I believe. And are you dealing with different issues or, yeah, if you could talk about that? Yeah, I I never go in thinking these are the issues that we want to take on, yeah. but it is just a way to talk about things that we are experiencing right now through the lens of this family. Yeah. So we got to talk about how people are divided politically without it being about anyone's politics specifically or anyone's policy, just about how does a family deal with this conflict or... Um, my son likes to wear skirts and more feminine clothing. So how does that affect the family relationships or how they treat him? We deal with, uh, Roseanne really wanted to deal with the opioid crisis in mm -hmm. this country. So that's another, another issue. But um, I always think our writers do such a great job of doing things that are in current events without making it feel like we're doing an issue. And I thought you did the same thing, honestly, with sexual harassment, issues between men and women and power, and, you know, just a woman's place in the world or a woman's struggle. Was that important to you or what was, was that the main reason you wanted to make this story? Yeah, there was sort of a layered approach uh, while writing Smilf in, you know, on the surface, what it's like to be broke and raising a kid and navigating co-parenting. And then underneath that, I wanted to explore, you know, feminine identity and the issues we all face. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, oh, how do we, you know, the how do we directly make this a feminist show? It's really just like, oh, what is life like for me and other women, mm -hmm. you know, um, who are harassed, who've been sexually abused, who have to deal with objectification or their own identity, um, object for subject, all those things was sort of just naturally going into the writing because those are the things that uh, me and the other writers are dealing with, mm -hmm. you know. And how much of your life influences the show? You know, does it look like your life was back then to some degree? The way we like to talk about Bridget is she's a very exaggerated version mm -hmm. of Frankie. Like we didn't call the show Frankie for a reason. Yeah. And, and I feel like the, um, you know, we, when we're stuck in the writer's room, like, okay, what, is a true story we can tell here. Mm -hmm. So it's always, it always comes back to a kernel of truth. And um, so that's sort of, that's important to us. Mm -hmm. But we also, because we wanna talk about certain issues, uh, we, we make Bridget the butt of the joke. So yeah. if Bridget's falling on, her, uh, falling on her butt, then we can sort of tell the story we wanna tell, you know? So on one hand, she's very similar to me, and then also, a huge departure and very exaggerated and a lot messier. Um, but there are elements of myself from a long time ago when things were really difficult, when, I, when my son was younger, when I was struggling with an eating disorder and, you know, and sort of uh, residual effects of trauma mm -hmm. that we put into the show very much deliberately. And she is very flawed and can be sort of self-centered and, um, you know, an anti-hero in some ways. 
Do you feel like the ways that she's flawed are the same flaws that you either have or had back then? Yeah, we we the, we also try to when we're talking about her in the writers room, um, like oh, we, Bridget can't be woke. You know, right. She hasn't read the books or whatever, have the conversations. So that's something that felt really important. That I don't know, I'm not claiming to be woke, but I'm trying to be as educated as possible. Yeah. Um, so there's part of, I don't know, it's sort of, it's twofold, yes and no, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I should be bringing this up every day. The stuff they put in those vaccines okay, is poison. Mother bitch. has filled your head with some crazy No, 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 no. Sorry. My mom informed me how America doesn't care about poor people. Okay, what does that have to do with vaccines? It's government mind control. I can't, I can't with this right now, I just can't. Hey. What about you and Darlene? Yeah, how do you feel about your connection to Darlene and your personal, um, what's true about you and that's what's true about the character? I think um, over time, since I played Darlene originally, I probably have gotten more vulnerable and gotten older, so I've gone through more hard knocks. Mm. And I think I wanted to bring that to Darlene, that kind of humanity, so she can still have a sharp tongue and have a tough side, but a little wear on the wheels, you know? I, I wanted to bring that feeling to her. And um, I guess my goal in general is, in any project, is probably to want to tell people's stories and have them relate. So I think in order to do that, I feel like I have to bring a chunk of myself, probably what you're saying about being in the writer's room and wanting real stories. So in that way, I think we're the same. Um, I've always thought Darlene was a little stronger than me. Mm. She's just has this fire and this strength that maybe I have, but you don't, maybe you just don't feel it when it's you and I can sort of not when I'm playing it, but later watch her on the screen and see this kind of, this inner strength. There was that moment in the first episode where Darlene gets really emotional on the couch. Mm. It was so powerful. And I remember thinking, um, oh, how we didn't see that side of her before, but now she has these kids, or as much, mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, because of the life that she's now lived um, and the vulnerability there with her mom. and. I was so moved by that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was great to bring this other side forward. And I was also a little nervous because I didn't want anyone to think I was betraying who Darlene was back then. Even though, like you said, she had some of that. Yeah. But I, before the show aired, I was a little nervous that people were gonna say, oh, Darlene's gone soft, or, you know, that's not the Darlene we know and love, but I haven't really had that, that reaction, so I was grateful. In a sense, Darlene having this sort of tougher shell allowed her maybe to, um, like she had to have that to grow up in that family, mm -hmm. right? And then going out and having kids and then coming back home, it was, for me, it was completely believable and understandable, because we as humans, as we grow, I feel like we get um, we maybe, we, I don't know how you feel about this, but we go either way, like we either harden up or we can be soften, or I yeah. see that with my own mom and my own family. Um, or so. people get crazier or more sane. I yeah, too. totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, what do you want me to say? I lost my job, okay? You know, I, I didn't know what else to do. I got two kids, I got no partner, so I came home. Why didn't you just say that? Because it's embarrassing. So did you have any challenges being a first time showrunner, having your own show, getting through the first season, not only being a showrunner, but starring in it? I mean, that seems so overwhelming to me. Yeah, there were a few challenges in the first season as, as you know, I hear people face in all first seasons. Mm -hmm. um, there was a challenge of shooting with two three-year-olds, and I felt like half of my responsibility on set was mothering them. Yeah, those kids are amazing. They are everything. They're my whole heart. Lexi and Anna, they're incredible. And 
um, large part and due to their parents. And so, you know, it was just. Did you say Lexi and Anna? Yeah, two girls playing boys. Le oh, how playing funny. A boy. Yeah. <laughs> because I, you know, when we were shooting the pilot, I probably met with over a thousand children. Yeah. And they came up through New Jersey, through New York to Boston. And it was just them. I was like, well, we're just going to make it work, you wow. know. So we, there are ideas in the future of what to do in terms yeah. of their story. Um, so there was challenges there if, you know, one of them didn't want to be there, if one of them wanted to talk, one of them, you know, just like how do we tell the story and work with three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get them? It seems like they are always crying when they need to be or talking <laughs> when they need to be. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, so Anna, it's like at three, wants to be an actress. Like she's like there and she's, she'll after a take, mommy, I did good, you know? <laughs> and there was the episode, episode five, where she has to be missing her panda. Mm -hmm. And she just- That's what the one I was thinking of. She's just like, you're like, Lexi, look, or Anna, look for your panda. Where's panda? And she just does it. Um, and then there's in episode seven, we're potty training. And so Lexi, if we brought her to set, and that, you know, there's very strict child labor laws. Mm -hmm. so three hours for each each child. Um, but it was like, Lexi, we're gonna do potty training. And she's like, no, I don't wanna do it. Which was exactly <laughs> what we needed. So we knew Lexi, who's more of the, right. like, I'm gonna do what I want yeah. for those scenes. And then when they need to be sitting on the potty, you're like, we'll use Anna. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> totally. It's funny. Yeah. What about you? What were the biggest challenges while shooting this first season of Rosanna? Yeah. The biggest challenge is probably my own personal anxiety. I felt so much pressure to get it right and not to betray the original series in any way. And um, probably like the first tape night, just out of body kind of feeling like a lot of people will probably watch this and and a lot of people did. And a, and a lot of people did, which we're super grateful for. And, you know, just this idea that, you know, I probably shouldn't think this way, but I, I was just thinking a lot of people will probably watch this. And if this one's not good, they may not ever watch again. So this is the one that we have to nail. And this is the hardest one to nail because it's the first one. There's like nine characters. There's 21 and a half minutes. Everybody's doing this for the first time in over 20 years together. So that was probably the biggest struggle for me. And how involved were you in, in the writer's room, in casting, in the crew, all of that? Probably annoyingly involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, I think I, Roseanne really asked me to lead the charge to some extent and you know, fight any battles that needed to be fought or help with all of that. And, and there weren't, it was such a peaceful, amazing experience. But um, I felt like a gatekeeper in a way. I just felt like a self-assigned, I've got to make sure we don't let people down or, yeah. or the quality suffers. And then just got so lucky with Bruce Helford and Whitney Cummings and the writers and, and all that. And um, was able to relax more throughout the season because they certainly know what they're doing and are better at that than I could ever be, so.